Hi, I'm Doreen, or Leviathan of my friends, and I'm an eldritch abomination lurking in the corners of your attic. And today I'm going to teach you how to draw hair the right and correct way. Alrighty. So with a woman, you'll want to start with our normal base. The head should be small, rounder, and heart-shaped with enough room for delicate features, but also big eyes. Her neck needs to be small and quite thin, no muscles. She holds up her head through sheer feminine magic. Of course, her hair is always long and is beautifully curvy, just like her. We'll begin with the actual hair by drawing a nice full hairline and a beautiful side part nothing too fancy here. Then we have to make sure that her hair is as curvy as her. Remember all those curves now, people. Okay, I, I can't do this anymore. Obviously, that's not what you're here for. You're here to learn how to draw hair, but honestly, art tutorials feel like a quadruple-edged sword at this point. They're either incredibly gendered, or they're not really teaching you the technical side of things. They're just teaching you how that person draws in their style. This applies to general anatomy tutorials, how to draw eyes, how to draw hair, even hands and feet don't escape. But I do think there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I won't leave you hanging. I will teach you how to draw hair the way that I draw hair, just in case you were actually interested. And I'll also talk a little bit about what you should do as a beginner artist rather than looking at all those terrible, terrible Pinterest tutorials. My style inspiration when it comes to hair is Amanda Rotten, Emma Lardy, and Cakey Bakey. I like hair that sort of flows on its own and has a lot of overlap and in general isn't incredibly complicated. I do start by sketching out my head and the center line for the face so I know which way the head is going to be facing or looking. Believe it or not, that is an important note. Depending on which way your head is angled, you're going to have a different view of the hair and it affects everything else, yada yada yada. General rule of thumb, draw these things before you do anything. If I'm not used to drawing the character or I think it might help, I do draw in what I think their hairline might be. For beginners, this is a good idea to do no matter who or what you're drawing. Your hairline is a good indicator of how your hair will lay. For instance, this person doesn't have an obvious part, but their hairline is indicated pretty heavily. If you look closely at their scalp, they do have somewhat of a middle parting where these bits split off so your sections will follow along that. I find it's also important when you're drawing protective hairstyles or textured hair to know where the hairline is and how the scalp is configured. This is so you can be as accurate as possible and not draw weird bald spaces in between locks or braids, as most people won't just be hairless in those areas unless they have alopecia or some type of hair loss. After you've figured out your hairline, you'll get to sectioning the hair into manageable shapes. For this particular tutorial, I'll be using this person I found on Pinterest. When you're just starting out, don't worry about if you're tracing over references or not. You can always go back and redraw the head from the sketch you did or eyeball it from your picture reference. For the purposes of this, I'll be drawing over my reference, but I usually just eyeball it from my reference. I have divided this haircut into six manageable sections and also drawn in the hairline, although you can't see it in the reference. You can do this with any reference also. Here's a couple of, here's a couple of examples I did the other day. Now we're going to start refining the hair and make it more stylized. I don't personally draw in every strand of hair, that would be horrific. What I'll do is take note of the hair texture. For this one, it's a bit more feathered out and wavy, and I do a sort of outline on top of my previous sketch layer. For wavy hair, I focus on making triangular shapes that aren't exactly uniform. I overlap the pieces of hair a little to give it a less of a flat feeling. All of the lines I then create will go with the flow of the hairstyle or shape of the hair. This person's hair flows from a spot sort of to the side and the top of their head where their part is, so you want your lines to flow up and towards that point. Sometimes they'll connect and sometimes they won't. Usually there's a mixture. On much shorter hair, like a buzz cut, I wouldn't do this. Instead, I would draw shorter strokes in with the highlights and imply shadows on a multiply layer which is a completely different tutorial altogether. After I draw those lines, I then focus on my line weight. We have three different types in this house. Thinnest, middlest, and thickest. My thickest are the outside lines, which, which does vary in weight itself, just like the other two types. In general, they all vary on where the shadows are implied. The middlest type of line weight is for the sections we did in the beginning. The middlest type is for borders between sections, again varying where the hair is thicker and thinner and where shadows should be. The thinnest sections are specifically for the lines you drew flowing to the part point. They are here to imply things, not to be the main course. And that's how I generally draw hair. 
hair. I'll shake it up depending on how I need to. For longer hair, I'll put these semicircles for overlapping pieces. And, and for certain hair partings, I'll draw these triangles that imply the underneath of the hair. Or if it's a hairstyle where it's looser hair that's been braided or put up, I'll also add little bumps to give the hair more dimension. Always remember that hair is never flat unless you've gelled it down and sprayed it with an inch of your life. I've started messing around with flyaway hairs as well. I think they look cool. I'll keep you updated if I add it into my normal rotation. The reason why I wanted to make this tutorial is because I got really frustrated over non-necessarily gendered art tutorials. Now don't get me wrong, I really do like drawing Dorito-shaped men. But it's also important to know that a lot of the tutorials that show these types of men are incredibly gendered. They're teaching you an artist's style rather than actual anatomy, and they're incredibly binary in a boomer way. People do not actually look like this, they just don't. Not only is it insensitive towards trans people, I don't look like this Dorito man as much as I would maybe want to, but it's also insensitive to everyone with a different body type than hourglass and inverted triangular food. Stop looking at these. Just stop. Half of them have probably been affected by AI somehow anyway. What you need to be doing is looking at real people. You can literally do life drawing sessions for free at home on your tablet or your computer. You could probably access this from a Switch internet browser and you can definitely access it on your phone. Start studying how different body types look, study profiles that aren't button noses, mess around with proportions before you look at those stylistic tutorials and you need to actually know what you're doing and why you're making things look a certain way. On the website I use you can even study different expressions or animals. The world is your oyster. Just because someone draws something a certain way doesn't mean you need to. In the description below I'll have a couple books and also technical tutorials that I find pretty helpful. It'll at least give you a starting point. Whenever it's a tutorial and not how to draw perspective or how to use the fill tool on Procreate, always know some type of stylization will always be present in the video. It's not wrong to want to emulate that, but that isn't the beginning of knowing how to draw a person or their hair. Thanks for sticking around. I know it's not exactly what you came here for, but at least I gave you an actual tutorial. If you like my videos, why not hit the like and subscribe button? If you super like my videos and want early access to them and the ability to vote on what character design videos I do, check out my Patreon. Everything is linked in the description down below. And just remember, don't look in your attic. You won't find hair tutorials there, just the ever-consuming, ever-hungry void. Thank you to Jacques, Herald of the Dark Roast, Meg, Exarch of the Golden Egg, High Artisan Anonymous B, Great Alpha Wolf Squilliam William, Nairuz, Seer of Rosy Mercy, Ghost, Infernal Collector of the Damned, Golden Paladin Court, Isabella, Redeemer of Bad Himbos, Keeper of the Lapin Warren, Robin, Most Royal of All the Rats, Ethereal Consort of House Vicarian, Fungal Sovereign Taz, Exalted Curator Wick, the Under Elf of Delphinia, Paragon of Starlight, an impossible amount of rat babies, Divine Herald Jordan, Astraea, Sage of the Outer Realms, Wretched Sauce of House Worcestershire, Champion Pallypunk of the Immortal Valley, Tailor of Macabre Coney Livery, Eternal Apostle Austin, the Contingent of Fables, the Eminence of Light, Bunny, Exarch of the Ornate Tomb, Harley the Sanguinous, Grand Overlord Silas, Being of Exalted Sunlight, Delegate of Clan Latinurs, Eternal Consul Puja, High Magi Katie, the Herald of Wrens, Knight Susan of the Milkiest Order, Great Seer Claire, and Sir Matthew, Guardian of the Preserved Apiary.